Hi, my name is Nikki Seward. I'm a Delta land and property owner and business owner, and my business is here on Steamboat Slough. And that is one of the reasons why I'm very interested in the latest plans to revise the Delta and why I'm very, very concerned about uh, the changes that are being proposed uh, regarding uh, measuring Sacramento River inflow and outflow. Um, I did a research uh, going back to when our state first became a state and looked at uh, what the different documents said about water flow and so with this short video I'm going to present just a part of that research and this is focused specifically on um, water flow uh, on the Sacramento River between the I Street Bridge or you could say between the city of Sacramento down to Rio Vista and why the changes that are being proposed uh, would have a drastic effect on the natural waterways of the North Delta. So um, I'm going to run around the same one document and uh, what I'd like to point out first and hopefully you can see this, I'm going to make it a little bit larger so it is a little bit more in your screen. Um, for many, many years, uh, there is the area called the Yolo Bypass, which is in this area, and then the Sacramento River flow would go down this way, and exports would go out the uh, Delta Cross Channel uh, down McCollumy or down uh, Georgiana Slough to be exported. And exports uh, amounts were allowed based on uh, different figures. Uh, basically there's the uh, state would look at how much estimated flow there was and would figure out a percentage of the net flow or um, they then they switched to saying they had to have a minimum of net outflow so if they counted uh, how much water was flowing on this area of the Sacramento River they would uh, determine how much they could export uh, into the McColmy system using the cross-channel gates um, open or close in uh, Georgiana. Uh, in the last couple of years and particularly in 2010 there has been this uh, move to change to count yellow bypass which as you can see it physically cannot flow up or uh, towards Sacramento and then down the Sacramento River and out. Well let's look at specifically what was uh, the flow calculations and this was for average water years uh, according to uh, previous documents prior to 2009 2000 the year 2000 was used as a w average water year for a lot of the computer modeling for all the documents we're seeing right now and I'll go through and show you those but I want to explain this first so before 2004 uh, very often we saw documents that said there was basically 4,000 acre feet, so 4,000 TAF of uh, possible flow on the Yolo Bypass on average. Um, that's not flood flows, this is just normal flows. And then on the Sacramento River on average before 2004, we would see fairly consistency, consistently 17,000 TAF that would be flowing down this area. And from that of that 17,000, 4,000 uh, TAF would get exported roughly. It kind of depended on the year, if it was a dry year, wet year. But it was four, maybe 5,000 of that would get exported. And then we started seeing changes starting in 2004. Well, um, in 2005, we saw document changes where it um, said there was on average uh, in uh, uh, average year, it would be 18,000 TAF and Yellow Bypass was only 3,000 TAF. And then in 2009 we saw another document um, this is all these documents come from DWR from Department of Water Resources they're online documents they're reports for the water years and I will go through and get, show you some specifics um, which where I got these number but you see in 2009 that there's definitely much lower flows and that had to do with water years and projections and we'll, we will go over that also 
in 2010 this is when we see this big change where what's being proposed is to count yellow bypass water as zero and put the yellow bypass water as if it flows through the Sacramento River as if there's 21,000 TAF or 1,000 acre feet that flows down the Sacramento River. Well, the problem with that is um, we know that it physically doesn't flow that way. It Yellow Bypass flows down Cache Slough and um, just to show you, flows down Cache Slough past this uh, gauge, flow gauge at Rio Vista and on out and helps to control salinity where um, Chips Island uh, and the fresh water flow helps to keep salinity out. Um, with this two uh, year 2010 change, if yellow bypass is counted here, well of course the water exporters want to do that because that means the percentage of water that they will get, it might look like the same percentage, but because the starting number is higher, they're actually getting, um, what it comes down to is, uh, you know, 1.4 million acre feet more per, per year, which uh, represents billions of dollars extra in uh, water that they can sell. Uh, the problem with that, if, if the 2010 uh, method of counting, there's several problems, but the first one that's really impacting to Steamboat Slough, Sutter Slough, uh, Miner Slough, and what used to be called over Old River Sacramento, that which goes from basically Vieira's or Ida Island up to Walnut Grove, is um, the problem is that it leaves much less uh, water flow, fresh water flow, for us all to share. That is going to affect, affect the water quality for every farmer in this region of the North Delta that draws water from the slough. It's also going to affect um, lower water flow, means that there will be more um, invasive species like Agaria densa, which will clog the and line the waterway. And if you look at, like for example, the north end of Steamboat Slough, you will see a lot of Agari Denza along the banks. That's going to uh, continue to increase um, as there's less and less water flow on Steamboat Slough. Um, the sloughs will silt in, and um, the more they silt in, you will see more of the tulies, which will hinder. Um, navigation and actually hinder fish. Um, there's a whole other study on the problem with uh, Egeria densa and actually tulies which are native but they um, block um, some of the fish uh, protection. Anyway, so I'm, I'm just going to talk about this flow. Uh, 6,000 TAF to split between these di different natural waterways is totally insufficient to meet um, the promises made to us, to us meaning this whole area of the Delta, by the federal government and the state government. The Yolo Bypass waters will go past Rio Vista, and so the Rio Vista gauge may indicate that there's correct flow here, but that will not still leave correct flow in Steamboat Slough and the lower part of the Sacramento River and, and Sutter Slough. It will affect our water quality, it will affect navigation, it will affect um, an increase in Ingeria Denza that we've already seen. So there's a lot of negatives to this. So, and the positive for water exporters is that they will end up with more water based on the net delta outflow index and uh, those calculations. So we should all be ex objecting to this form of using flow, not just because it is um, damaging to our area of the Delta, but it is also inconsistent and with the past data and um, and we'll go on uh, the other issues on it. So I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. I'm going to increase this a little bit so you can see it. This is pre-2003 and Sacramento River average uh, average water flow and this is you can see the documents I use you can go to them and see it or there's a website delta readvision.com go to the issues page and the water flow issue and you will find all these documents and hundreds more 
in the actual resources from 1920 on I believe on that one anyway you can see this was it was 17,000 TAF the measure was TAF YOLO bypass was counted separately then we go to 2005 we've got 18,000 TAF 3,000 TAF YOLO bypass still counted separately let's go to 2009 um, is this a low water flow year the uh, document was not really very clear uh, this may be have been some sort of a projection of what they end up wanting to do but the numbers are very different but I still wanted to bring it up uh, and then also look at 2009 we see a very similar uh, graphic to this one up there um, in 2009 what we see is um, here's a wet year here's an average year and this one says um, that's 18,000 TAF and the 3,000 TAF so we see a little bit of consistency there and then we get to 2010 and this is where you see this document and um, also if you look at the Delta Stewardship Council their white papers um, this must have come from URS because it says URS Corporation 2007 um, water year 2000 which they kept using in computer modeling as an average water year and what does this say 21,000 TAF nothing for yellow bypass so they're saying use that for their net delta outflows and it's not realistic so let's uh, look at in 2011 what are we saying we see these same graphics oops sorry I did not mean to do that I've got to go back and find it again um, so we see the same graphics in 2011 I'm gonna move it over uh, only this time in 2011 what what are we seeing it's the graphic but we're using million acre feet and now we've got 29 million a acre feet well that would put it up to um, so they've got a dry year and a wet year and we don't even see in this graphic an average year so um, million acre feet well that's thousand acre feet with uh, minus a zero two or three <laughs> anyway and what else do we see in 2011 oh now what they have decided to switch to flows in cubic meter meters per second we have seen cubic feet per second very consistently cubic meters per second haven't seen that before so that requires a uh, utilization of conversion tables if you go to the conversion table charts and the video on using the conversion tables you'll see why that one is a problem so I want to go up here now and look at how the water flows this actually is from um, flood management uh, website for the state but it's a very good graphic um, the state very closely managers manages how water flows and this graphic shows the water going down the Sacramento River here's the Freeport um, gauges and it goes on down the Sacramento River there it shows exports um, for on the McCullamy to go into the McCullamy system for exports off to other places but as we see it goes on down and yellow bypass gets added into the Sacramento River uh, water gets taken out for the North Bay aqueduct keeps on going down and um, here we see the Delta precipitation and Delta um, use and then goes past the Rio Vista um, gauge now notice if if it's what what all this computer modeling would have need to to show was this yellow bypass had to have been somewhere up in here but it's not that's because it physically doesn't flow and this flood management they need to look at how water physically flows and not play the games of saying that this water actually comes up uh, and and back flows up, up past the I Street Bridge it just doesn't do it so it's wrong and inconsistent for the state to uh, be proposing that at this point in time I'm gonna look at another graphic this graphic comes um, from another um, one of the agencies and it's looking at water rights actually and it's a slide and I want to quote this inappropriate inconsistency can result in inequitable treatment no common understanding of key water quality 
and water rights goals and difficulty in achieving a meaningful evaluation of outcomes. So I, I think that I've just showed that how much inconsistency there is right now in just simply one issue and that is the calculation of, of where the water flows. It is inappropriate, inconsistent, and will uh, result in substantial inequity for the farmers of the North Delta if Yolo Bypass flows are counted as if it's flowing on the Sacramento River at Ice Free Bridge when it is not. I hope you'll look at the other videos regarding the same issue, particularly um, the video series. Um, it's actually uh, three different videos about calculating water flow on the Sacramento River. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.